fishing, both fly and off a boat. DNA, vinyl records. This could all be on. I don't know about that with Jim Jeffries. Aloha! First thing I'm going to teach you, that means hello and goodbye in Hawaii. So mm, thanks, if you take anything wow. from the podcast, you've already got that bit of information. <laughs> Working one of those, <laughs> work in one of those, you're really onto something. You're a regular Hawaiian folk. Uh, I'm Jim Jeffries. Welcome to the show. If, you, if you're a regular listener, I think this is episode six or five or something like that. Thank you for joining us all the five. time. If you're, if you're a first time listener, uh, where have you been? <laughs> where have you been? You've missed some good topics. Hey, remember cheese? Yes. Wasn't that good, eh? Hey? I'll never forget cheese. Yeah, remember cheese. We had, I'll tell you what I did on the way here. I did a little recap of my day. I woke up, potted around a little bit, did some homeschooling with my son. You know, as I said, I, I can't teach a seven year old. I don't know how to do This is a big surprise because to me. Because <laughs> he has math and it's like it's like 22 plus 27. And I'm like, that's 49, right? Yeah. I go, just add it up, yeah. right? And he's like, that's not how you add it up. I go, it is how you add it up. You think of the two numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mesh them together and off you go, right? Mesh them together. <laughs> yeah, mesh them together. Or you get the two yeah. 20s and then you add them up individually and then you get the other two parts and you add them up. That's how I do it, yeah. right? And he's like, no. And I go, oh, there's something to do with carry the one. Remember, yeah, yeah, he used yeah. to have to carry the one. Mm -hmm. I don't you know don't how have to carry a one in that, in that equation yeah. you just did, though. They don't carry the one anymore. There's a thing they do off to the side. They've changed math. Yeah, Common Core, I think, is it's changed the way that they do math. Right. Well, I can't teach a seven-year-old math. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I had to Google how to do it, and I was still a bit confused. A little bit confused. Can't teach a seven-year-old math. I wonder how the strippers are doing. Not good. No, not I good. I don't know if you're aware of them. The I, 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 feel, I feel like the cocaine dealers, the strippers, and the prostitutes are having a hell of a time. Although the cocaine dealers probably, yeah, they're probably they'll, they'll be all right. They're doing fine. Yeah. Everybody's at home and they're like, yeah. can you come over now? Because I, like, know, I know I'll the, be there in seven minutes. Well, I know the <laughs> weed and the mushroom dealers are going through the roof. I'm holding up that whole company. <laughs> right. but, but the actual, That was funny when they, when they said, the essentials they listed liquor stores and the weed dispensaries it was like well because people have it as medicine man yeah yeah liquor <laughs> i wonder if there are any strippers doing shows like via zoom like comics are yeah that's webcamming <laughs> <laughs> no but it's like a whole zoom thing where they get all their stripper friends i've invented this idea right <laughs> where women get on the other side of a camera and they take their clothes off and men watch via the internet i meant like an, for, an entire lineup for corona yeah. Is it, my, my f yeah, like the comedy shows but on the girls Zoom. can't be together either. No, I'm saying each of them are oh, are logged yeah, in at their yeah, home, yeah, yeah. and it's like uh, now call in chastity to the, to <laughs> yeah, the you Zoom. Yeah, even a flyer with all yeah. their faces on it. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite things my dad ever said. My dad thinks he invented. My dad invented the mixtape, right? Oh, right. And I'll tell you why. Right? Sure, he did. Gary. He came into me. I was about 18. I was sitting on the couch. And he comes. He goes. I've got an idea. And I said, What is? He goes. You know how you buy an album, right? And it's all just the one artist you bought, right? And some of the songs you don't like. And then there's a couple of songs where you go, they're good songs. But that's what you buy the album for, two or three songs. Here's an idea. One album with a whole lot of different artists, <laughs> but it's just their best song. And I go, Dad, but they're called compilation albums. They already exist. He goes, not with the songs I want. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's Summer Jam to 74. <laughs> Gary's Road tape. Trip mix. We should, we should talk to him and make we, that tape. We should, yeah, we should introduce <laughs> everyone, Forrest Shaw. Hey, yeah, I'm Forrest Shaw. Uh, Jack Hackett. Hello. Jack Hackett also knows nothing about the topics we're about to talk about. Nothing. Kelly Black. What is the Black Heart thing? I've never asked you this. Um, I had a situation years ago that I lost $12,000 by having my real name on social media. And... Um, also, my nudes got posted online too, so I just didn't want. Um, oh, <laughs> I didn't my want my real name. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want my real name on uh, social media anymore, so I uh, go by Blackheart. Uh, Did you no. already give that information out publicly? Because now people are gonna be Google. They, they're gone. Oh, yeah. okay, that's good. It was like seven years ago. I, I had a person once threatened to release. I think I just talked about this in a, a, a stand-up special wanting to release a sex tape of me uh, and some nude photos they took. They were going to release them. And I was like, 
Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Who wants to watch that? <laughs> like, like, is there a big market for that? Just me, just like in the shower, just washing my balls. Like, is it's this like what... number one, Pamela Anderson, number two, Kim Kardashian, number three, Jim Jeffries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one wants to see my sex tape. I don't want to see my. I've had sex tapes that I watch of myself back and then delete them. I'm like, <sighs> like well, she, was, she, for everyone, she so. was doing a fine job, but I really let that whole situation down. <laughs> I'm not an attractive naked man. I've never had a good body in my whole life. I've never had a body where I've gone, that was pretty good then. <laughs> that was like me at tw- me at 19. Never? Ooh, not, never. It's never been good. Mm. It's been variations on shit, right? It's, <laughs> it's always been portioned like this, like a little belly, no chest, no ass, and then it's sort of everything grew out the same distance, <laughs> bigger belly. Uh. Still no, I can get, I could gain 200 pounds and have no ass, and I'm happy with that. I'm proud of that. I, I I'm not a, I'm not a big ass fan. I'm not I'm not part of the the Kim Kardashian era of men. Women back in the day used to go, "Does my ass look fat in that?" And I used to lie and say no. <laughs> and now, <laughs> if you say no, it's an insult. Now you're meant to say, "Oh yeah, it does." Oh yeah, I've got a nice ass. Yeah, you got a nice. I feel like yeah, Forrest. Yeah. Forrest, something that people don't know about Forrest, he uh, gets his jeans tailored. Yeah, I think ah. people might know that. No, maybe they. Well, don't. I, yeah, you can talk. You don't about- tailor your jeans. No one does, Forrest. <laughs> they sell them in so many. Actually, and the Jim Jeffrey show, I tailored my jeans. No, I think it. you're supposed to bring in the legs a little bit and stuff. Yeah, mm. bring in the legs. Yeah, yeah. You, you got the you widest get, thighs I've ever I seen. Know, in the that's because that's I have to get jeans that are really wide on the top, and then they're wide on the bottom, and I don't want it to make it look like I have these big wide jeans. So I t- tailor them in. Right. Does the website you buy your jeans also sell oversized shoes and bow ties <laughs> that spin around? I get my jeans <laughs> at a regular store. Clowns are us. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have a guest. Forrest, please introduce our guest. Our guest today is Mark Dyerson. 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 I'm sorry, Mark Dyerson. Oh, I know. You specialize in vacuums. Boom shakalaka. That's Dyson. That's Dyson. Oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we don't advertise with Dyson, but I won't buy a different vacuum. Hello, Mark. The other vacuums don't try to come on the show, buddy. <laughs> I tell you what, the Dyson, they're not going to improve on that. <laughs> okay. That being said, it's not a vacuum. That's okay. okay. Uh, Mark, hello. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Good, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on the show, Mark. All right, so here's the part of the show uh, we call it judging a book by its cover. Well, Jim, we'll try to guess what you do by asking yes or no questions. You only have to answer yes or no. We may give him a hint at the end. He still probably won't get it, but it's fun. Hmm, I'm trying. Okay. Uh, do you work at a university? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're, a, you're a janitor. <laughs> <laughs> He's who Goodwill Hunting was based on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how do you like them apples? I've never understood that. Do you like apples? How do you like them apples? I don't get it. Is there a joke that I'm missing? No, that's it? that's a saying. Like, how do you what do you, how do you what do you think about these? Or how do you like? How do you like them apples? That's like a saying. What does that mean? It's kind of like it's like how do you like this? Yeah, like basically. in your yeah, face. But what like. about apples? Why no, apples? It's just a saying that was. It from, probably came from somewhere. Yeah, in America, so it's, it's, it's not meant to rhyme. It's not rhyming slang for something. Yeah. Okay, no. so you're not Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> Uh, do nope. uh, are you a professor at the university? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you uh, uh, teach a course where a practical course where people can get jobs afterwards? No. Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> that that makes things a bit weird. Pottery. So, yeah. He's a pottery professor. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had a friend who studied American cartoons at university. Like, what the f- what? <laughs> what type of fucking Mickey Mouse course is that? Anyway, no, that's um, what a professor and so no, I'm kidding. Uh, okay, so it's something that people can't get jobs. So I'm going to say that you're a, 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 a doctor in philosophy. That's your final answer. That's my final answer. Lock it in. That is incorrect. <laughs> uh, Mark, introduce yourself. Tell us what you do. And and, and- I. Yeah. I do have a doctorate in philosophy, as we all do. That's PhD is doctorate in philosophy, but mine is in history. I am a sport historian at Penn State University. Wow, a sport historian at Penn State. I reckon the last sort of 10 years has been a ropey bit of history for you to, to talk about. Yeah, there, there's been some interesting happening. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the Olympics, Jim. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, the Olympics. And this is what Mark has come here to talk to us about. Um uh, what I, I think I think I know a lot about the Olympics. Mark has written some books too, just by the way, if our books on the Olympics uh, that he's published, "Making the American Team: Sport Culture and the Olympic Experience and Crafting Patriotism." Oh, sorry, and Crafting Patriotism for Global Domination: America at the Olympic Games. So those two books. 
specifically in the Olympics, and there's another black woman. Right, but we're not going to be talking just about America in the Olympic Games. No, Olympics in general. Everything to do with Olympics we're going to be talking about. And here's what we're going to do now. uh, Mark, Jim is going to tell us everything he knows about the Olympics. I'll prod him along with some questions. And then at the end, you're going to grade him one through ten on accuracy. And like I said uh, before, please be fair. I mean, please be harsh if you You don't have to be nice. Um, Kelly's going to grade him one through ten on what is it? Confidence. Confidence. And I'm going to grade you one through ten on how you're dressed today. And I'm, Jack's going to eat a sandwich. <laughs> I'm changing it up, Jim. It's, I'm <laughs> going to change the topic. Sandwich. One through ten on how you're dressed today. You're pretty yeah. good today. So we'll see. I've been doing different hats. So, yeah. So here's a uh, oh. here's because uh, believability and confidence is almost the same. I'll come up with something else next week. So we'll add those all up together. One through ten. Uh, ten being the best. And the three of them together. Thirty is the best score you can get. So if you get twenty six through thirty. Um, I'll be Michael Phelps. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. what I have. Yeah. Uh, 20 through 25, Bob Costas, because it seems like he knows a lot about the Olympics. I don't know. He's hosting it all the time. 13 through 19, you're just a regular medalist. 7 through 12, Eddie the Eagle. And 0 through 6, Elizabeth Sweeney. I used to date Michael Phelps's ex-girlfriend. I did a routine about that. I know. That's why I <laughs> put you, that you, there. Yeah. You, you remember her. Yeah, I remember her. I remember her. Yeah. <laughs> she was fun. Um, yeah, I used to date Michael Phelps's ex-girlfriend. I always used to think when I'm shagging her, I'm not doing a good job here. <laughs> like, like a guy whose profession is holding his breath better than yeah. anyone. And the stamina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he used to eat like, they reckon, 10,000 calories yeah. a day. He was eating chocolate bars and stuff like that. And I was just... You were doing that too. Right? I, was, <laughs> I was at my health's worst at that stage. That was the height of my substance abuse days. And uh, no, I was sweating like a banshee. I don't know. It's, you scream like a banshee. But all that screaming must make you sweaty. Um, so I, I'll give you the bare bones. On the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First off, first off uh, you don't have to tell us what the Olympics are. I think you know what the Olympics are. But let's just start with, like, what year were the first Olympics? Okay, they were in Athens, the first Olympics. The first Olympics were in Greece, where everyone actually ran naked. because, And it was just men who could compete at the time. Uh, and they were in, oh, I don't know that. I'm going to, oh, I'll say, give it a go. I'm going to say uh, they were in 1818. 18, 18, like AD? All oh, right. This is um, ain't, we're talking about the ancient Olympics is the one you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that wasn't... I was meaning in the... Okay, so I'm going to go... I'm going to go 2000 AD. 2000, that, 2000 AD would just happen like 19 yeah. years ago. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. two, 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 200 AD. Your believability is way in the tank right now. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Like 200 AD. Okay, and then, and, then, and then they were brought into the modern era when... Like, in 1818. <laughs> okay. I just got mixed up on those. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. And then, um, okay. And so, like, why, why, where were they started and why were they started? They were started in Greece, and right? Why? Because um, tourism. They wanted more people. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would have been something, 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 something to do. Like, how do we get people I've, over here? I've been to Athens. We went to Athens. We gigged in Athens. <laughs> Fucking hell, Athens. <laughs> It's got all the it's got all the history in the world. It's got all the the places that people want to visit and no infrastructure. People are visiting and they're like, "We go, where's the Colosseum? Oh, the Colosseum? Where's the Pantheon and all that type of stuff?" We, Acro- we are at the Acropolis. The, so. the Acropolis, right? And they go, "Oh, it's up there in that hill a bit." Have you got a map or anything? Oh, I take a photo of this photocopied one yeah, we've yeah. left on the wall. <laughs> That's literally what they did. Is they take a photo. <laughs> right? Like, and there's like, it's the middle of the day on like a Tuesday. There's all this construction stuff up around it. No one working. <laughs> no, one, no one fucking doing. And there's just cats wandering around. <laughs> there's just cats everywhere wandering around. And then you go down. And you visit. But it's still packed because they know people want to go yeah, there. People, like, people that's still go. Yeah, How so. they had the Olympics there a couple of Olympics ago is beyond me. Well, I think it was the last Olympics, right? Is I oh, know it was, oh, it was some time ago. Yeah, it was I, some I, time ago. Well is is that. beyond me. There was just the, the marathon people must have just been running over homeless people, <laughs> getting getting chewing gum on their shoes. Like it's <laughs> it's it's not it's not running well, Athens. Also, it's the only place where my show had to be like 10 p.m. It had to be really late at night because oh, we have dinner at two in the morning. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Not good. All right. Back anyway, to the but nice people, great crowd, really enjoyed it. There was a child in the front row who was six. And I said, I'm not comfortable with that. And they said, the parents are fine. I said, I don't care about the parents. I'm going to be swearing and telling sex stories. And I'd rather a child not be seeing there. The compromise we ended on was this. She would watch her iPad with earphones. <laughs> anyway. So, so, so tourism, that's what you're saying. I, no, like, it was, it was, no, of course, tourism was a joke, Forrest. I know it started. Oh, okay. It started because of the Greek gods and their competition. And, and they wanted to win the heart of Athena. 
Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did they compete in the nude? You already said they competed in the nude. They competed in the nude. In the nude. They okay. competed in the nude. Um, and there was the, the, the Olympic flame, they say it never goes out. That's not true. They get it off the sun in a little solar dish in Athens and they put the torch in and they grease it up a bit and the sun reflects off it. It's the, the, the Olympic flame never goes out in our hearts. That's what happens okay. there. But it does go out. And also, it didn't in, the, in Barcelona, when they shot the arrow, the guy didn't hit, he shot over. He shot over and there was just a person there to ignite it. And in Sydney, when, when, when Kathy Freeman came out and they made her look like she walked on water, right? And she went out and lit it. The thing stopped for a bit and it stopped. And everyone thought it was for tension. Nah, it was fucked. And a boat with a broom got underneath it, <laughs> gave it a bit of a poke till the mechanism started working. And then it went up and everyone went, woo, like that, right? And, and Muhammad Ali, when he lit it, he wasn't working either. <laughs> <laughs> I hear he burned his hand in he the ladder. Like he burned himself. He's just holding there, burning it. Everyone's going, "This is fantastic." He would have shaked any either way. Okay. He was he was on fire. All right. Um, <laughs> when were when were the medals uh, created? When uh, did the, that come into play? The medals came in what year? Uh, in in, in the third. You know where to that big in, in in the in the fourth Olympics. Right, and they were they, <laughs> in the fourth Olympics. You could be right. I don't yeah, know. they were in the fourth Olympics in Tokyo. Uh, mm. They just get now. They were in the fourth Olympics. They still kept on in Greece. In the fourth Olympics, they went, "Hey, give them a disc or something," because they're trying to unionize, right, and get paid to be athletes. If you give them, a, it's the same as the Oscars. The actors all wanted a pay rise, so they got together and they went, "Give them a fucking trophy." These people are so vain; they'll fucking dig it, right? And they went, "Oh, how about a trophy? Ooh, competition and trophy, right?" So, so to be in the Olympics. For the most part, although it's changed with like the dream team and stuff like that, you're meant to be an amateur athlete. You're not meant to be a paid person. Mm -hmm. But there are sports they have in there. They have tennis and they have basketball and there's different sports that are. But for the most part, you're meant to be an amateur athlete. And so maybe they brought it in so the amateurs didn't go, I should get paid for running real quick, right? And then they they said, it was in Greece, of course, so they said for running real quickless, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's how they talk, yeah. right? For running really quickly, I deserve some uh, some money. And they said, how about this shiny disc if you win? And then the person went, oh, well, I get money from second. How about this silver dish? <laughs> if, and then the guy's third, I won't get anything. They go, oh, so, throw him a bit of copper. So they're worth, they're worth money, the medals? They're not. They like were. Is there real gold in the gold medals? It or? is real gold in the gold medals. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing is not the whole. Gold. No, not solid gold. No, 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 no. It's not. How much are the medals worth? You think if you uh, just sold it on? If you were to sell it online, depending on the sport and depending on the athlete, it could go anywhere from uh, four thousand dollars to two hundred thousand dollars. It's in that price range right there, depending on the athlete, the event, and so if you got, okay. if you actually, if you got Michael Jordan's gold medal. From the Barcelona Olympics, that's that's uh, three hundred thousand dollars. He's got it though. Yeah, but if he was to sell it, if he if he, uh, yeah, okay. if, he if he was I think Michael Jordan needs to sell his medals. If, if, if he was hard up, and after the documentary, you went, look, uh, the gambling thing was out of control. <laughs> I, I, I did have a problem. I can't sell enough shoes. <laughs> okay, let's move it on. Um, and then, uh, what do the five different color Olympic rings represent? Uh, they stand for the five continents on the earth. Okay, and then. Um, uh, what's you up didn't even give me a tick then. Forrest just underlined something. <laughs> I just write stuff down to remember what we talked about. <laughs> right. I don't. I I I know that it's something. It might stamp. I don't know if that's correct, but I know there's something. The colors. What are they? What do the colors represent? Um, the the different colors of people. Around the world. <laughs> Nailed it. You've got your reds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've you got, got your yellows. You've got your, you got your greens. greens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought that was a good idea. There's a white um, ring, a black ring. We're we're gonna, gonna, the only ones a bit tricky is green, but, but back in the day. When there was a lot of Lyme disease, mm -hmm. the greens were represented yeah. very well. I'm going to ask you a few more questions, and I'll have some more questions later, but just I'll ask you a few more questions. Tell me everything else you think you know, and then, okay. and then we'll start talking to Mark here. Okay. But, I, um, uh, are the rumors of Olympic Village sex true, or what do you know about the, the sex in Olympic the Village? The sex in Olympic Village, they can't give away enough condoms. They have to throw boxes and boxes of condoms, because a lot of people, you allowed, for the most part, you're allowed to stay there for the two weeks that the Olympics happen. And so if, you have your, if you're a marathon runner, you're like, this is shit because you're the last event, right? And you have to think and think and eat healthy and all that type of stuff. But if you're someone who does the swimming in the first week and you're like, I did the butterfly, lost my qualifier, now I'm gonna fuck me some athletes. Cause everyone's got really good bodies, right? The NBA players are there, you're telling me that there's no sex going on from some Australian sprinter that's just like, I'm gonna have a go at LeBron. 
This will be good, <laughs> right? So that's definitely happening. Yeah, there's loads and loads of sex happening. They do have to share rooms though. They have to share like bunk beds and stuff like that. The Olympic Village, the one in Homebush in Sydney, after it's all done, they all become apartments. For the most part, when the Olympics end, these stadiums just rot and go to hell. Beijing's a fine example of that. Um, okay. Where right. where the the stadium now is just covered in plants and shit. And I think Sochi already is already like the luge track just looks is covered in graffiti and all that type of stuff, right? All right. Sorry, was that was that wrong of me to say that? No, the Australians, no, say though, as you want. I, I'm just going to keep praying the questions. The we're Australians gonna still keep their stadium up and running. Now, this is something, and I'll tell you, and this is something I believe, and I I may know more than him on this one. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Austra well, it's Australia. Only two bucks on okay, it. so the people who get most medals are the uh, Americans and the Russians, and that's why when Russia wasn't in uh, one of the Olympics, the Americans just can't. Ca ca so mo most medals as Americans and Russians. Americans and Russians, right? And what about break it down summer and winter? Who's got the most winter? Oh, okay. Winter's a different bag altogether. Um, that would be. It'd be Switzerland or Sweden or something like that. I'm not going to one of the ones that start with an S. It's it's Swiss sound. It's a Swiss yeah, sound. Sweden, Switzerland, Norway. These people carve it up at the Olympic Games. I remember where Australia more than there. America. Ah, uh, yeah, they have them. Okay, I think they do more. America, see the pop. See, per, okay, per capita. Australia wins the Olympics every time. Oh, here we go. For the amount of people. You're like the, it's like when people talk about New York pizza. It's like, yeah. I'm excited about Australia. Against the population, <laughs> Australia wins the most amount of medals of all, capita, to, of, of all time. Capita, Australia. Okay, I'm running that down. Now, your number one medal guy used to be, like, you got your Flo Joe. You got your. The, the, yeah, the all-time winningest Olympic athlete. Yeah, Flo Joe. Is, is, oh, Michael oh. Phelps. Okay. I'll say Michael Phelps. Yeah. I'll, I'll do him in order. I'll say you're Michael Phelps. Yeah. You're Carl Lewis. Uh huh. Uh, then I'll say um, Flo Jo. Yeah. And then I'm going to work in Ian Thorpe. I like you just saying Flo Jo a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Ian Thorpe yeah. would be in there. And then uh, uh, Bunky the Ice Skater. Yeah, Bunky. <laughs> Bunky. I, I was hoping you'd say Bunky. I loved Bunky, Bunky yeah. Um, and then uh, the Olympics. Uh, the Tokyo one is postponed for it's now. It's been you know? postponed. So because have it even been canceled ever, the Olympics? Uh, the Olympics have been canceled. It, number seven. Number seven. Was, yeah. what's, what city? There's, there's, there's been uh, one, two, I believe three that were canceled. Um, I, 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 I don't know about that. Mm. Okay. Okay, I have no idea. I'm not even going to lie to you. That it was, boom, Seattle, Moscow, and Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of those have, cities have had Because it was canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle, Moscow, point. and Jerusalem. Okay, maybe Moscow. <laughs> Jerusalem definitely didn't have the Olympics. Yeah, they <laughs> did. <laughs> they did. The, the, fucking, the donkey races. <laughs> uh, okay, the, the, one more the, question, oh. and I think we're going to take a break before we yep. do the go. Um, one more question, um, and then we'll go there, is how much money does a country need to spend to host the Olympics, and how much will they make? Just quick. Um, I think they run at a loss, but it's hard to gather if you like make- How much will they spend to, to prepare for Oh, it? they'll spend um, uh, 20 billion on the Olympics. 20 billion, and they don't turn a profit? I believe that some countries turn a profit, and other countries don't. It depends whether you use your infrastructure afterwards and whether it adds to tourism in the long term. Okay. I think in the short term, they may get close to breaking even, but it's like, okay, so the World Cup in soccer makes so much money, but this one in Qatar will probably do fuck all. The one in South Africa, they weren't filling the stadiums. Yeah. So some of the shit, like I think Sydney did very well. I think London did very well out of it. But in Tokyo will do fine, but then you got the ones where it's like, yeah, what was the one in Russia? Sochi. Yeah. Who went to fucking Sochi? No yeah. one went there. It's bleak, Jerry. It's Somebody bleak. Went there. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with my, uh, Mark Dyrison, and we're going to grade Jim on how he did. I think I did pretty good. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, let's talk about sex. Good sex. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> now you can increase your <laughs> performance and get extra confidence in bed. Listen up. BlueChew.com. That's blue like the color blue and chew like chewing. <laughs> Blue Chew brings you the first chewable pill with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take them anytime, day or night, depending the company you're keeping. <laughs> <laughs> Even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work twice as fast as a pill. So you, you can be, be ready whenever 
the opportunity arises. Okay. Oh. Woo, woo, woo. If you can benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Blue Chew, I'll tell you what, Forrest. Oh, yeah. It's prescribed online by licensed physicians. Doctors. Oh, I like the licensed Doctors. Ones. Licensed yeah. doctors. Yeah. So if you have to go to the doctor's, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office and wait in line and then go to the pharmacy and wait in line again. Why am I doing this? I'm getting corona. Why would I want to wait in line? <laughs> but it ships right to your door. Mm. Corona free. In a discreet package, which is good. It doesn't say, doesn't say, boner. oh, boner pill on the side of it. A siren on top of yeah, it. Yeah, you know, UPS person <laughs> doesn't wink at you as they give it to you like, ah, ah, like that. No, 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 no. They ship it to you in a discreet package. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit bluechew.com and get your first order free when you use the special promo code Jim. Just pay $5 shipping. That's a $5 erection. $5 erection. Not bad. I'd pay... 20 bucks to have one right now. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's B L U E Chew.com. Promo code Jim to try it for free. Blue Chew is better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. As people adapt to this changing world, oh God. we're all going to be buying more <laughs> stuff online than ever before. If you're an e commerce seller, are you ready to meet the demands? <laughs> Of our new delivery culture? I think not. <laughs> Probably not. But be ready with ShipStation. <laughs> Why ShipStation, you ask? Well, when you're selling online, getting lots of orders out fast, it can be tough. How do you keep track of who gets what? Which sh shipping carrier should you use? It's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Are you getting the best rates? Probably not. That's why you need ShipStation.com. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. Just a few clicks and you'll be managing your orders, printing your labels, and getting your products out to happy customers. ShipStation makes it easy. ShipStation helps online sellers of any size get orders out quickly, save money on shipping costs, and keep, more importantly, their customers happy. Oh, why'd you point at Jack? Because Jack's a customer. No matter what you're selling, where you're selling, maybe you're selling on Amazon, Etsy, your own website. ShipStation brings all your orders in one simple interface. Forrest, how's your Etsy store going? Ah, uh, it's going great. Say it, uh, say it. What are you say selling? It once, say it twice. Uh, I was selling rocks. What before. are you selling now, though? I've upgraded to glass. Oh, ah, yeah. he nice. sends it to exes, and it's all shattered, so they cut their <laughs> hands when they open it up. It's, 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 it seems a, petty. It's a niche market. It's things I make out of glass, mostly <laughs> fish tanks. ShipStation works with all major carriers, including UPS, FedEx, UPS, and even Amazon fulfillment. Uh, they even offer big ass um, discounts on shipping costs. <laughs> they offer the big, big ass discounts. Like big ass discounts. <laughs> the biggest discounts you can get. Big ass Kardashian size. Fast discounts. <laughs> now, any business can access the same postage discounts that are usually reserved for large Fortune 500, 500 companies like McDonald's. Oh. <laughs> you always know when you're getting the best deal. You ever had a Big Mac shipped to you? Uh, no. Yeah, ship that. station could get it to you, but McDonald's, <laughs> <laughs> they get the best rates. And you uh, can get yeah. those same rates. No wonder ship station is the number one choice of online sellers. You'll ship more for less in less time at the best available rates. And right now, I don't know about that, listeners can try ShipStation free for 60 days by using the code Jim. Make sure your business is ready to meet the demands of delivery culture. Get started at ShipStation.com today. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Jim. That's ShipStation.com. Then enter the code Jim. ShipStation.com makes shit Ship happen. <laughs> you almost made it to the end there. Yeah. That's shipstation.com. Not com. Shipstation.com. Make ship happen. Shipstation. Shipstation. Give them what they want. <laughs> okay, we're so, back. So Mark sat there very patiently listening to... You probably learn a few things there, Mark. <laughs> hey? Probably a bit... I did. Yeah, some things you can pass on to the young minds that you teach. <laughs> um, Absolutely. On a, on a scale of one to ten, Mark, how did Jim do uh, with his knowledge of the Olympics? Well, I don't know at Penn State, you know, because we went all Zoom University after spring break. We modified the grading schedule 
Uh, so you could take a pass fail or get an actual grade. So oh. does Jim want an actual grade or just what, a pass what, fail? I'll take a little from column A, a little from <laughs> column B. Well, we need a one through 10, 10 being the best one through 10. Yeah. I'll give him uh, a seven. That's a pass. Ooh, that's that's, a, pass. that's a, pass. a pass. That's a good score. That's a good pass. That's a solid C. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. That's All right, good Callie. Uh, um, confidence, you know, at one point you said Quickopolis, and so you lost some points there, but then you said you might know more than Mark, uh, so that brought you back up <laughs> to, I'm going to give you an eight. All right. Oh. Eight. Oh, okay. I'm grading you on how you're dressed today. Um, not bad. Black t-shirt, clippers hat. It looks like you might have shaved. No. Yeah. No, <laughs> that's points. To uh, I'm going so bald in quarantine. It's falling but out of I my really, face. I do like the glasses. That's yeah. a running theme now. Yeah. Two yeah, episodes yeah. in a row. I think yeah. you should wear them every week. I'm going oh, no, you- to wear them until people get irritated. And then I'm going to keep making them more extreme until I'm like diamond or average. <laughs> I'm going to give you a seven today. So wow. Wow. This might be the best score he's ever had. No, I'm I think, Flojo. I think drugs is pretty high. <laughs> no, number you have. That's a total of 22. I just meshed them all together. Give them what they want. Give them what they want. Bob Costas. That's what we're going to call you for oh, this Bob one. Costas, who I think, I think Bob Costas looks like Mark Hamill's brother. Okay. Don't you think he looks, <laughs> don't you think he looks a little bit like he could have been Luke Skywalker? So, um, okay. let's get into the Olympics. <laughs> um, Mark, can you please tell us uh, a little bit about the history of the Olympics, the first Olympics in ancient Greece, like what year that was, and bring that up to the modern version, so. So the first ones in ancient Greece are in 776 BCE, and they're not in Athens. They're way out in the sticks in Olympia. Uh, in oh, the, that uh, makes sense. The city state of Ellis, <laughs> so, uh, out in the middle of nowhere, they still are today. Uh, and they last till AD 394 when uh, the Romans finally get rid of them as a pagan ritual. So they lasted for uh, roughly 11,000 or 1170 years. Right. Uh, the modern games did start in Athens in 1896, the revival. You were almost close. 1818, Jeff Just a quick, still with us. a quick question. With these ancient Olympics, um, did that involve other countries or was it just Greek people in these first initial ones? You were required to be Greek. There were three requirements. You had to be male, so you were right about that. It's all men. Uh, you had to be freeborn. You couldn't be a slave, and you had to be Greek. So they limited it to the Greeks. When Rome con- conquered Greece, uh, they sort of forced it more open, and uh, the Emperor Nero once competed at uh, a special Olympics that they set up. Now, because they because they um, they they competed naked, I've met a lot of Greek people. I feel like there'd be a lot of wind resistance <laughs> on, on, a, on a Greek man running naked. They're a, they're a hairy bunch, the oh, Greeks. Oh, right? big penises. Yeah. No, they're probably a big dicks as big big dicks as well. But I, I reckon there'd be a lot of wind resistance. It'd be, it'd be like Georgie Animal Steel running down a track. I, anyway, but I, I digress. <laughs> well, they. They were naked and they were oiled up too. Part of it was to showcase their bodies. They covered themselves in oil before events as well as taking off all their clothes. And that's why they call uh, the anal sex Greek style. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 1896 was the modern era as, as we know, the Olympics as we know it now. That's when. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, what was the. Oh, the so. Why were the Olympics started? Because Jim said it was tourism, and then what was your next thing? It was to it was to please Athena. Oh, Athena, yeah. So, well, the ancient games are religious. It's actually uh, for Zeus, not Athena. Yeah, right. Uh, they're also <laughs> to train warriors and to uh, build a central a sense of cultural unity among the Greeks. Uh, much like Muslims today have to make the pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, people from all over the Greek world, which was all of the Mediterranean world, felt the need at least once in a lifetime to go to ancient Olympia for a game. And what were the initial events? Uh, they were There were some track and field-like games, so they had a, uh, a discus throw, a javelin, foot races, but not long distance, distances. They only cared about sprinting. Uh, they had boxing and wrestling, and they had a violent MMA-like game. Uh, 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 thing called the Pankration, uh, a no-holds-barred fight to, there were a couple of deaths in that. Oh, cool. Jeez, and, nice. Uh, and I'm going to throw you a curveball. Let's see how good you are, Mark. Right, you ready? When did they bring in? I'm ready. When did they bring in ping pong? <laughs> uh, not in ancient Greece. Yeah, but what year, what year, what year? Did they, and, 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 and is it really called whiff-waff? 
Oh, that's right. When we were, when we were in Asia, in when, Britain, we're in London. The British people are obsessed that they think they invented ping pong, and it's called whiff waff because of the sounds that the bats make. That's what they and told us. They, wow. they call it whiff waff. And, and Boris Johnson said that he said he goes, "Oh, we invented this. It's called whiff waff." So yeah. was it ever called whiff waff? Not to my knowledge, and they hate ping pong too. So the aficionados want to call it table tennis. Yeah, make it more. Right. It's a date. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. ping pong does sound racist. <laughs> does if, yeah. if you if you called someone a ping pong, you know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, they did compete in the nude. We went over that, um, and that was just because they like to be naked, I guess. No, because they greased up to make them more streamlined. Correct? No, Mark. Nope. No. Okay. Is that just so they're greased up. They they compete in the nude because they think that athletes are close to the gods and their gods were anthropomorphic human like so a great body meant you were close to the gods and they wanted to showcase and their ideal of beauty was a, a male athletic build also when aroused second place to hang a medal <laughs> <laughs> um jim said that medals came into play in the fourth olympics really yeah the fourth really tried to pin number it down four and, and number four <laughs> when, when were the modern medals created as we know well, they're not, they're not ancient, so they're modern. The, the ancient Olympics only gave you a, a, an olive wreath crown, no medals. Uh, but the, uh, actually, he's close. So it's the third Olympics in St. Louis that invent the gold, silver, and bronze <laughs> wow. medals. He just threw up four. Give them what they want, Jim. <laughs> Give what they want. <laughs> so in St. Louis, they were, yeah. And they are, because that's kind of like a twofold thing. So they, they are definitely worth money. Jim said they're between 4000 and 200000 depending who it is. But also, is that... That's in lieu of athletes getting paid because they don't get paid. And the, did the ancient uh, Greeks the, and that ancient games, did they get paid? Or like... Yeah, one of the big messes, the ancient Greeks were amateurs and nothing could be further from the truth. You know, they love prizes. They love money. So they got not from the, Olymp uh, the games at Olympia themselves, but from their city states where they trained. They got cash payments. They got women. They got houses. They got... Uh, freedom from paying taxes. So, uh, I've been to Greece. They'd be happy with a cop and cigarettes. A 93 <laughs> British invention to keep uh, the lower classes, the Australians, from competing. Oh, oh. So, yeah, so this is an invention. <laughs> Some fighting words. <laughs> hey, what, Mark, was I correct in saying that Australians win the most amount of medals per capita? Is that correct? They do better than the U.S. I think if you look historically per capita, Australia with a smaller population does a little bit better, but nowhere near as good as, say, Jamaica, uh, which uh, has a tiny population and a lot of Olympic champions or small countries like that. So Jamaica there's some in your face. unique outliers, yeah. uh, Finland in the winter game. But if you get rid of the bobsled team, did Jamaica <laughs> still do as well? <laughs> They do even better. Yeah. <laughs> the bobsled team's yeah, keeping little, them down. Little, little sidetrack. What's what's your favorite Olympic-based movie? We've got Eddie the Eagle. We've got uh, Cool Runnings, and Miracle. there's probably Miracle. What's your what's your? The, well, there's a net. There was the Nancy Carrot, the I Tanya. I, I, I Tanya. Like what's your favorite Olympic-based movie? There's a, there's a lot of good ones and a lot of bad ones. I think on the best list for me. You know, Chariots of Fire is up there. Lenny Riefenstahl's Olympiad, if you can suffer through the six hours of beautiful uh, bodies in, in that. Six My hours. vote for all-time worse is a movie called Pentathlon, about the modern pentathlon that nobody cares about, starring Dolph Lundgren uh, as an oh. East German who escapes to Southern California and then wins some vague Olympic modern pentathlon medal, shooting his former East German coach, played by David Soule, uh, with a pistol. Uh, to win the gold at the very oh, end. Don't ruin event. it. Don't ruin it. I haven't seen it. Hopefully Dolph doesn't <laughs> listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dolph, we can tell you hate this, Mark. Dolph, yeah, a lot of details. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren was like, I will That's throw a disc. It's a fascinating movie. It really is. So bad, so bad it's good. Oh, well, I got to watch that. Dolph Lundgren, write that down. Pentathlon. Ton, well, we ton. have it recorded. I, oh, yeah, I can listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> uh, the tor Did you answer the torch, like where it started? The torch started. It starts in a silver dish. They grease up. Oh, yeah, I know, but like the origin of the torch, like when, when it started. Oh, uh, that happened when uh, there was a burning bush in Moses. Hmm. 
And I don't know. I don't know when the the torch started. I don't know okay. what the idea behind that was. I I always find it like when the torch the torch is coming through your town, and like in Australia, there was always some kids who threw some eggs and stuff like that. And the prime minister got on the TV and went, "They're bloody idiots! What are you doing? You're ruining it for everyone else." And everyone thought those guys are legends. <laughs> um. So so yeah. When did, when did the torch start? So the Olympic flame, the cauldron's L.A. in 32, but the torch starts in 1936 for the Berlin Olympics. It was a Nazi innovation. The Nazis were trying to I, I connect don't, ancient Greek civilization to I don't, uh, Arianism I don't, uh, and Nazi supremacy. So they invented all the the, the torch relay and all that jazz. Um, okay, so the Nazis did it. So that's the thing about the Nazis. They weren't all bad, you know. They did invent the torch. <laughs> Cut that out. And the, <laughs> and, and the autobahn. That's where they really the peaked. The torch and the autobahn. <laughs> yeah, the, the torch and the autobahn, you got to give credit where credit's due. So the, when, they did other horrible things. Bad people, but the torch and the autobahn. When I read this, I was like, that, this is like a, it's just a staple of the Olympic Games, the torch. I mean, it's like the lasting image that they're running through the whole country that they do and stuff. So was it was it on Hitler's thing? Because I'm always fascinated by the things like Hitler and it, like like approved the Volkswagen Beetle, right? Yeah. And then it was adopted by hippies yeah. as like the peace love. And yeah, that was my car in college. Yeah, Hitler had a car and he said, "Make the roof a bit higher. I hate when the roof hits me head." <laughs> and they went, "Ah, oh, good on you, Hitler. Good on you, mate." And he goes, "No, boy. He goes, put the fucking boot in the front. Put your trunk in the front." That's a bit different. They went, all right, he's fucking mad. He is. This will never last. All right, Hitler, you can say what you want, but he designed a car that people love to this day. I'm airy. I'm 6'2", blonde hair, blue eyes. I was driving a Volkswagen all through college. Uh, so, was, was, <laughs> so, was, so was Hitler, was Hitler uh, responsible for that or did someone just come to Hitler and then Hitler went, yeah, whatever, burn something? Yeah, so it was, you know, German uh, uh, archaeologists connected with Hitler, but Hitler was involved in the whole... Uh, let's connect Arianism back to ancient Greek and Roman civilization. But the next Olympics after Berlin were where? So then it was like they 1948 were... in London. So 36 in Berlin, and then there's a <laughs> and they were just like go ahead and use the torch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's because that's because that was the the Olympics in Berlin was the Jesse Owens thing where famously Hitler didn't stand up because he, he the superior race and all this type of bullshit, right? And so that is amazing. So yeah. in that Olympic they invented anything. Then we had some Olympics off because of the war. Of course, those were canceled. Uh, yeah. Canceled. We, we had yeah. some Olympics off because of the war. Then we came back together. We separate Germany into two countries and go, and we're nicking your torch idea. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you think the culture, the, the Germans were like, cultural appropriation? I don't know why they're Jamaican. I got Jamaican. <laughs> that was my German, Ich bin ein and bobsled team. <laughs> I think you should always do it as a Jamaican accent. The Germans, you know yeah. those Germans. So they, hey, they, sound, yeah. they sound nicer when you do yeah, it. So, the, so the Germans came into Poland like, hey, man, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you having your own country no more. <laughs> and they were like playing steel drums. And people were like it was harrowing. <laughs> um, since I was going to say something else, but since you touched on that, so yeah, you did get. Now you got it right. Post after the the Olympics were canceled. Uh, how many times, Mark? That was. I, I, I'm trying to find three. Out. So 1916, they were scheduled for Berlin, ironically, and World War One scuttled them. Uh, 1940, they're scheduled for Tokyo, and World War Two interrupted. And then 44, they never got awarded. There were. Uh, rumors for, uh, that Detroit was going to get them or uh, Buenos Aires, but none in 1944. Yeah, you think Tokyo would have gotten the nod? Yeah, yeah. Like during the war, Hitler yeah. would have gone, oh, we're going to win here. It's just us versus the Japanese. <laughs> but it is interesting because <laughs> let's, let's play wrestling. <laughs> let's play wrestling. <laughs> these Olympics aren't canceled yet, the Tokyo, but should we never have them in Tokyo again? That's the question. Like, first there was a war. Now there's like a global pandemic. I think, is there. Some common denominator there. We've maybe. been jinxed. Yeah, maybe they. I, I guess they would get these. Aren't canceled yet, right? The Tokyo. No, they're the, they're delayed by a year. Am I correct? One year they're delayed by. Right, 2021's the theory. They were in Tokyo in 1964. Uh, okay. So to reintegrate the Axis powers after World War II, uh, Munich gets the 72 games. Tokyo got uh, uh, 64, and Rome got 1960. Oh, okay. So, so they were all sort of given to people where we're like, ah, all's good. Yeah. You can have yeah, the Olympics we're all like, again. Yeah, it was a peace offering, basically, which cities got them. Oh, right. right. So, when did they bring in? I've always hated these the fucking mascots. Oh, that's funny mm. you mentioned that. Oh, those mascots! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that my thing at the end? No, no. I just had. I just didn't know if we would get to this, but 
Uh, well, yeah. When did they bring? Because they had what they had one in in Sydney that looked like an upside down teardrop with a couple of circles around its base. This is your first mask. I, I didn't print up two of these. This is your first one. That's you can hold first, that up for the camera. Like all right, all right. So I'm gonna hold it up. I'm gonna tell you what 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 that's like from. A sperm. That yeah. was that was a Winter Olympics because he's on a ski. Yeah. Right, and his name was Spermy. <laughs> <laughs> can you see him, Mark? <laughs> I can. Yeah. yeah, and he yeah. and he would have been at the. He would have been at the oh, before Montreal. He would have been at the nineteen sixty eight. Nineteen sixty eight. I think oh. that's the first one. Is that the first? That's what I have here. At the Mo yeah, yeah. At, at the Moscow first Olympics. One. Grenoble. Grenoble. I watched Grenoble. a documentary on this. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible! What happened to those people? <laughs> Where, what's uh, what's where's Grenoble? I don't know. It's In France. Oh. It's uh, really? the Winter Games. It's Jean Claude Keeley. That's Zeus, the first mascot ever. His name's Zeus. Shush. 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 Oh, like shush. Shush. And shush. shush. <laughs> I go down the mountain with my little friend. I have a baguette. I wear a beret and shush, shush, shush. <laughs> I win the medal. Um, so why, why I use the, it as a cheese plate. <laughs> <laughs> why were the mascots? I mean, I'm assuming like just marketing or whatever. Is that like the. Yeah, marketing and cartoons in the 60s. And yeah. All right. So see if you can guess. All right, I'll tell you where my, they're all my, from. My printer, the color started to run out, so everything's pink. You that tell me the color they are, and I'll. Well, that one's supposed to be orange, a tiger. You can hold it. He, I, I can... That was that was Beijing, and that was uh, uh, Frosty the Tiger. <laughs> That's the before picture of Tony that the Tiger. That is Soul. Soul. 19... I remember that one. 1988. I know. Yeah. I, remember... I don't know what his name is. Do you know that that other names? The tiger. I can't remember the Soul one. There were yeah I, multiple I can... oh, weird God. characters. Soul. Uh, what would you call the Soul one? What? That's Korea. His name yeah. was Hodori. 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 Oh. He's Hodori people. Oh, I would have called him Hunky Dory. <laughs> this one's probably pretty easy. You should get this one here. Maybe. All right, Jack, you can play in this as well because yeah. you haven't said anything. <laughs> All right, that one there. I think it's from your hometown, Jack. What do you say? Or was it the Atlanta one? That, I don't think it was the Atlanta one. The Atlanta one was one of those Coke bottles that danced well, to it's music. It's clearly the United States. That's, yeah, baldy. that's, bald, that's all baldy. I'm going to say that's yeah, that's uh, that's uh, Eddie the Eagle. Not Eddie the Eagle. I'll go Ernie the Eagle from the LA Games. Um, that's Sam. 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 Sam well, the Eagle Sam makes sense. From, from, Eddie, from LA? LA. Right. Give him what they want. <laughs> okay, and the, and the last one. Here you go. That's going to be a hard one, I think. That's the one. That's the upside down okay, teardrop. So, so you know it then. Yeah. What that's the? uh, from the Sydney Olympics. No, no it's not Sydney. Oh, that's Atlanta. That's Atlanta. Uh, that's Atlanta. That's Atlanta was the upside down oh, teardrop. I've I, seen him around. I forgot oh, what the man. Sydney one was. The, and he was called What's It or something? Or this Who's guy, It? This who's guy it? Was, yeah. was called Izzy. Izzy, Izzy, Izzy. Yeah. Izzy. I don't, what was so, the Sydney the, one? The Sydney ones. I didn't print it up, but it looks like it's just a bunch. It's like a duck billed platypus and a akinda. Uh, and a, it's a kinder surprise <laughs> and some other bird Ant. like a blue footed I don't know it's a bunch of animals in Sydney was it like three of them or do you... oh we had a like we had a whole we, we got too many no, animals I was asking Mark not you uh, that, that. <laughs> yeah there's several <laughs> uh, animal characters yeah which are pretty common for yeah yours, Olympic mascots yours was more like in line of what the country was so, yeah Australia's yeah. got a lot of good animals mm -hmm. we, I'm, I'm thinking about writing a children's book we'll get to that on some other podcast okay. <laughs> I have a lot of my head tell me my hands the rings so you said the five rings represent the five continents and the colors are all the colors of the people is that correct Mark? yeah I believe both of those the right. rings is correct but the colors are uh, uh supposedly every flag in the world has one of the five Olympic colors ah, uh, that makes they're sense. not racial colors that makes more sense that makes a lot more sense <laughs> That makes more sense. I like sense. how you're giving it to him. That does make yeah. more sense. All right. You're <laughs> like, right. Like, like, I, like people, they get the Olympics and then people go, I don't want the Olympics in my town. They'll have to build hospitals. They'll have to do this. When, when all those green people come over, think of the disease. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the most medals are American. We kind of touched on that. He says it's American, Russia. Winter, you did say Norway eventually. Ah, uh, Norway, yes, Norway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do have the most medals, and it, America is America has the most medals, medals total, right, Mark? Is that in the history of the games? Yeah, by far. Now, with the Winter Games, when was that brought in? That would have only been in the modern era. Was that ever in ancient times when they brought in the Winter Games? No, that's a modern innovation. So, Chamonix in France in 1924, no, they start the Winter Games. Now, with the Winter Games, there's things that I don't quite understand about the Winter Games, because really, if we're honest, they're just the indoor games. Because, you know, basketball, they're the indoor and snow games. Mm -hmm. Because they play soccer in the Summer Olympics, but soccer is a winter sport. 
and they play well, other so basketball. It's technically a winter sport. Basketball is a winter sport, and it's played in the summer. So, oh no, it's the other way. No, the no, no, well, no, no. Basketball is played in the summer, summer but, but and it's you, a winter. The, the, the season, I guess, it's because the players are playing in the winter that they put them in the summer. I, don't I know. think. Okay, so to get me right. The winter games have to involve snow and ice. They're really snow and ice games, right? Because anything indoor will be played in summer. Am I right in saying that? Uh. Yeah, I think everyone, everything involves snow or ice. So hockey's a, a indoor uh, winter game, but it's on ice. Right. So you can't put ba- you can't put basketball today. in. You can't cornhole or whatever. You can't. It has they to could, be. They could do whatever they want, but historically, the the first basketball in the Olympics is in Berlin in 1936, and they played outdoors actually. Oh wow! Right. Okay. Uh, now with the I was really wow oh, <laughs> Our, <laughs> outdoors, you say? Ooh, well, that must <laughs> that must have been. They might have rained one day. Um, <laughs> Uh, now, with, with the Olympics, every year they seem to bring in a new sport. And does, when that happens, does another sport get the flick? Like, does another sport get kicked out for another sport? And how do you, how do you, how do you uh, uh, get your sport in to the Olympics? Yeah, so the IOC is worried about overcrowding now. So they've tended to boot sports out as new ones have come in. So recently, you know, baseball and softball have, have gotten cut out. Um and the way you get one in is you lobby the IOC, you throw bags of cash at them, and you try to demonstrate global appeal. And you want to look good on television. So particularly in the winter games, summer games as well, we've seen uh, they want a youth demographic. They want to appeal to that 14 to 29-year-old, especially male group with a lot of disposable income. So we've gotten mountain biking, and we're uh, going to get skateboarding. And in the winter games, you know, uh, snowboarding and stuff like that. Just and a lot of these games originate in California, right? Beach volleyball. Right. And so if you take a look at the medal count, uh, California is probably fifth all time in the sheer number of medals won in Olympic games, winter and summer now. Oh, if it was its own country? Yeah, be that's like pretty yes. Wow. So we've seen the Californication of the Olympics in the last, since World War II. Now, I know with like snowboarding, a lot of the, uh, the, the competitors got done for having weed in their system. You can't... And they're bringing in skateboarding. That's not. <laughs> that's not gonna. It's not gonna work out, is it? Well, that. That's yeah, in fact, Sean Wise is gonna try to double in uh, skateboarding. Oh wow! wow. wow. And when we, and when they bring the because the games are coming back here to LA and LA we have legalized weed. Will the players be allowed to compete on on, on marijuana? It's not a performance enhancer, as far as I know. So, but the IOC has banned it. We'll see. Yeah, so the players being banned, I'm, I'm trying to find the one here, but the first player that was ever banned from oh, the Olympics. I have a very quick thing to ask. Yeah. So back to the thing that we were just talking about before, where you said it, we want to make it good on TV, you want to market it to people, men aged 14 to 29. Um, my question is, is, is there a world that you see in the future where esports start getting played? Yeah, I get this question a lot, and you know it's a hot topic now, so... Uh, I'm too old for the esports boom. I don't really get it, but I do think you know we might see it in in 20 years if it keeps growing. As long as it makes money and has a big following, uh, the IOC might well scarf it up. Well, wow. uh, they're you know they tend to be older uh, elite folks, but they have a nose for making money and, and what plays well globally. So I could see that. So in 20 years' time, I could be competing in Mario Kart. That'll be good. That'll be good. It'll be just me and my lazy boy recline, and I'll be going, oh, he's got a banana pill. He's thrown it out the back. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. If learning a new language is on your to-do list, Babbel makes it fun and easy to start having conversations in en- en- Espanola or whatever language you prefer. You don't have to learn French. You can learn other things. Babbel is designed to quickly get you speaking your new language within weeks with a daily 10 to 15 minute lesson. Babbel teaches you real life conversations. You're not learning words and phrases out of context. You learn them through interactive dialogues. Isn't that good, Forrest? Yep. Yep. Babbel works (laughs) because it's built around real life, how people actually communicate and what they care about. Lessons are thoughtly created by over a hundred language experts. A hundred. Thoughtfully. That's way more than 92. But thoughtfully created. Thoughtfully created by over a hundred language experts and not by a translation machine. They're the worst fucking translation machine. If I could change one thing in the world. Why? I just hate them because I like an expert. 
and their teaching method has been proven to be effective across multiple studies. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. The speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. You should use Babbel. Ah, oh, yes. My pronunciation and accent is off the charts. <laughs> and Babbel is available as an app or online, so your progress will be synced across all your diverse... All, all your divert <laughs> <laughs> You know, all your stuff. <laughs> right now, Babbel is offering our listeners three months free with a purchase of a three-month subscription with the promo code Jim. Go to Babbel.com and use promo code Jim and your first three-month subscription on your first three-month subscription and you get another three months for free. That's Babbel.com, promo code Jim. Babbel, language for life. There's never been a bad time to save money, but now more than ever, finding smart ways to put some cash back in your pocket can make a huge difference. One way to do that is, is to save on things that you already pay for, like home insurance. If you own a home, reshopping your home insurance rate with Policy Genius could save you a good chunk of change. And the best part is, it's really easy. First, head to policygenius.com. That's so simple. Yep. I could do that right now. Yeah, I couldn't. I don't have a computer, but I could, I could do, do it on my phone. phone yeah. I could do it on my phone. You just head to the web page, policygenius.com, and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your home. Then Policy Genius will compare your policy against options from top insurers that will make sure you're getting the right home insurance coverage at the best possible price. Who wouldn't want that? Jack, would you want that? I think I would. Yeah. Jack's a long way away from owning a house and he's <laughs> and he's interested. <laughs> if Policy Genius finds you get a better finds you a better rate than what you're currently paying, they will take care of everything to get you switched over. Own a car too? Hey? Hey? You own a car? That'll go well with your house. Hey? <laughs> own a car too. Policy Genius will compare your home and auto policies across different insurers and even mix and match. To find you savings. They save their customers on average, wait for this, $1,127 a year Whoa. doing just that. Who doesn't want $1,127 more in their pocket? No one. No one. So if you want to put a little cash, a little cash, if you want to put cash. lots of cash back in your pocket right now, see how much you can save by reshopping your home insurance rates at policygenius.com. So buy that. We're back. Um, all right. All right. So okay, I, Olympic Village sex. Let's okay. do that. Let's well, then, talk about that. Then we'll that. talk we, about we me. We forgot me. to talk about that. I don't know how we missed that. My but, issues with the Olympics will be next. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sex in the Olympic Village, Mark. We briefly touched on that. Um, are those rumors true? Is that like running rampant there? As Jim are said, they, they give there, out condoms. Are there STDs through the roof? There's certainly lots of rumors. And, and you know, this has been persistent. The first Olympic Village is at L.A. in 32. They had a little complex in the Baldwin Hills. And uh, the movie companies were there from Hollywood. And Starlets uh, filmed with the athletes and stuff. So lots of rumors there. The, the most famous one is 30. It's 1936 in Berlin. And there was a claim that the German government paid uh, young Aryan women to go mate with Aryan athletes at the Olympic Village to uh, produce a super race and then would support the kids. But Jesse Owens uh, fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> Did Jesse Owens get was there any rumors about him? No, nah, he, he didn't fit the Aryan mold. So <laughs> unfortunately, he was not one of their targets. So uh, they were going for uh, more Aryan style athletes. But yeah, there are plenty of rumors and innuendos. One of the most famous uh, events of the Cold War is uh, an American hammer thrower named Harold Conley and a Czech uh, discus thrower. Uh, uh, both gold medalists uh, got together. Uh, Olga Fikatova got together in 56 in Melbourne, fell in love and got married in a very public uh, uh, Cold War breaking East-West story, moved to the United States. Uh, she still lives in, in the Huntington Beach area in Southern California. Did they have a child together? Yeah, his name's Thor. Oh, they did? No. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, like a javelin and a discus thrower. Yeah, yeah. She, she just shot it across the room. <laughs> when she got here we yeah. go. Just a little side note. We'll get back to the sex in a second. I know this. 1956, uh, the Melbourne Olympics. That's why I, uh, that, that was when uh, uh, t that was the first televised Olympics. It was the first televised Olympics. Am I correct? It was when TV was invented, and that's why Australia got TV because we had the Olympics. So we got it early. I don't know. Is it the uh, 
the first televised Olympics are the Berlin Games in '36. Yeah, it's only closed circuit TV uh, in in a few cities in Germany. Uh, okay, and then you've got television. Uh, 48 in London, 52 in Helsinki, 56 in Melbourne. Sort of at a local level, the first international broadcast is 1960 in Rome. So no. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he thoroughly told you that. <laughs> yeah, I, no, no. I used to tell people that, and I work with giraffes. <laughs> and and well, that's why this podcast exists. <laughs> you were close though. You were one Olympics off, and then yeah. it was international. No, it was wrong. I know that. I know that's why Australia got TV because we didn't. We didn't have television before it. And then when Melbourne got it, because I saw a documentary. Uh, there wasn't on, TV, on TV before 1956. No, yeah. not in Australia. We only had four yeah. channels. Yeah. On Australian TV, for, no one, nothing else. When I was a teenager, Skippy, Jesus. Skippy the for kangaroo. One of the channels during <laughs> summer just played cricket, five day games. <laughs> so you that cha- you and then back- would turn off after the game. The game was over. Oh no! Then they'd talk about it afterwards. <laughs> then there'd be news. There'd be a recap. It would be cricket all day. So you'd lose that channel all summer. Oh, don't even get me started. All right. Um, back to the sex in the in the thing. So is STDs running rampant? Uh, I don't think we have. You know. Good studies for sure, but there are lots of rumors, persistent rumors about STDs, about uh, a lot. Once athletes are done competing, you know, they're young, attractive folks. And because yeah, you, you would get the STDs surprised if they hook up. You would get the STDs after. You would go to the Olympics and yeah. then you'd come home. And if you had another partner, you'd have an STD and they'd be like, what'd you do? And like, ah, hey, just, pole vault. Gold medal. <laughs> um, so what's the juiciest bit of goss from the last sort of two or three Olympics that you've got? Like, you Juicy know, goss. That, you know, yeah, like, you like, like, hot like, you know, like LeBron did something. Or so whatever. The, like, what's, do, what's you know, do you know what the last three Olympics were, were they were, Jim? I mean, that's. Oh, the last three Olympics. Yeah. yeah. The last, let's just start with the last one. The last one. Winter Olympics was in 2018. Russia. I it's I don't even uh, Pyeongchang. I, oh yeah, Pyeongchang. Yeah, South yeah. Korea. South, yeah, South, South, South Korea. I know it's other guys, Pyeongchang, and then the last Summer Olympics in 2016. That uh, one should be easy. That was in Athens. That was the one before was Athens. No, I think World what was, Cup. What was the yeah. last one? We Rio. Played? Rio. Because they had the world. They, then they have the World Cup there, and then they had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll or, tell. Uh, after yeah. I'll yeah. tell. I'll tell a quick story. Very quick story before we get back in. Me and Forrest were on a plane once. And we were sitting there, and oh, yeah. I said, uh, "I said the Brazilian team is very good, but their goalkeeper actually plays for Toronto, right? So they got all these top players, but they don't have a good goalkeeper." And I said, um, "You said the goalkeepers in Brazil generally aren't. The I other said, players are top." And I was just, class. I was just bullshitting Forrest, and I said, oh, "The other, the other, the goalkeepers never any good because the filth that they play in in the slums, they want to run around a bit. They don't want to stay stationary and get sick, right?" <laughs> <laughs> but this is just not a plane to me and him. He's just kidding me. And then this woman who was in business class behind us stands up and she goes, "I am from Brazil. Not all of us live in poverty." <laughs> <laughs> she just gave you the stink eye the whole way yeah. out to the luggage claim. Yeah, she was like, so angry about. Yeah. It. I go, I was talking about the class divide they have there. I know you're not all doing that. Yeah. What are you bragging about going, no, our society is very distant. We don't take care of some people at all. <laughs> okay, so juicy goss, Mark. Juicy last, goss. Last, how many Olympics do you want to go back? Or just add, anything recent that you can remember? Well, juicy gossip from uh, Pyeongchang in 2018 was that North Korea sent a lot of uh, sex spies over to uh, try to impact the, the outcome of certain events by seducing uh, Western athletes. So that's really say sex spies. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm yeah. interested. Next week episode. Uh, I, th- I think a third of all my sex has been with spies. <laughs> um, so what does a sex spy do? Like they would they go and the rumor is would they ha- have so much sex with the person they'd be tired the next day, or they would yeah. put, give them food poisoning, yeah, so, or try to slip them uh, illicit substances. So you know, there's some famous events. There was the People's Republic of China reputedly for the '64. Tokyo Games, the favorite in the decathlon was a Taiwanese athlete, and he was allegedly drugged, so he ended up finishing fifth in 64. So there's a long tradition of uh, espionage, sexual and medical and otherwise at the Olympics. But he probably finished first the night before, right? Now we've got we've got young we've got young <laughs> we've got young Jack here. Jack, how old are you again? 24. Okay, we'll send you over to the Olympics now. <laughs> Jack Jack doesn't get much of the sex. Doesn't get much of the sex. But if he was an Olympian, there'd be a sex spy mm-hmm. that would do something to him. What event? <laughs> what event could we get Jack into the Olympics if he started training uh, yeah. now? So you, the, when, on the score that I gave you, the zero to six, if you would have gotten that as Elizabeth Sweeney, and you didn't ask who that was. But 
I don't know much about her. I think that she kept. She was the one that kept trying to find a loophole, right, to get in the Olympics. Like Eddie the Eagle, you find a sport no, that no one's playing. Do you know, you know. This about is a her? really crazy story. Mark, that... do you know about a little bit? Yeah. So historically, you know, at least since World War II, uh, nations could send three athletes in every event. Uh, so you didn't have to be top in the world. You just had to be in the top three in your nation and have them sponsor you. Um, that's how Eddie the Eagle got in. That's how. Elizabeth Sweeney got in, who was a terrible snowboarder. Um, <laughs> recently, they've changed that. You've got to at least sort of be, you know, top 500 in the world. They're not going to let was it because uh, of her? Or Eddie the Eagles in? But uh, but wait, wait, what country did past. she? What country did she compete with? Elizabeth Sweeney. That's what uh, I can't remember. I want to say it was like Switzerland. Uh, it was like Switzerland or Sweden. Yeah, because she wasn't like from there. But so is it because of that? Those two that they changed the rule? Is that what? So does that mean no more Jamaican oh, bobs? Hungary. Too? She was a Hungarian. Uh, yeah. Freak. yeah freestyle skier or a snowboard yeah anyways yeah and then i guess she got in there and just didn't just did as well it as was you like it was do. almost like a snowboard half pipe i think and she just went down it and like then cruised back like yeah. she didn't do any tricks or anything like that yeah. people were like what the fuck is going but on that was the other question I, that i had in there so like let's say if you were richard branson you owned all these islands and you made it your own country let's say could you just enter the olympics say hey i just created a country and now i'm in the olympics yeah, in fact, there are more countries recognized by the International Olympic Committee than there are by the UN. So there's plenty of, of countries that don't really count for the UN. American Samoa is in the Olympics, a variety of others. Mm. So basically, if you can get the IOC to recognize that you have a National Olympic Committee, if Richard Branson buys a big enough island and donates enough to the IOC, he could have the the Virgin Atlantic uh, Olympic nation and oh, yeah. you know, whatever he wanted. They've just gone bankrupt. <laughs> uh, so, I, okay. So I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Forrest, there are 195 countries in the world. I might be out by 10 or something, right? About 195. Uh, I, I think it's it two. Uh, let me say. Okay. I believe there's 195 countries in the world. I might be wrong. Forrest is about to tell me. Um, oh, 195, 195. countries in the world. Nice. Uh, This total comprises 193 countries that are members of the UN and two countries that are non-member observer states. How many countries compete in the Olympics? Uh, there are 200, more than 200 eligible to compete. How does that work? So there work? are more national Olympic committees than there are nations the UN Because the UN, UN it, Now, they don't all would... send teams, but they, they potentially could. Has there been a country that's never, that's competed, that's never gotten a medal? I, yeah, you're off the top of my head. I don't want to get this wrong. I know India has won very few in terms of countries with enormous populations. They've got a handful of medals. They used to be really good in, in men's field hockey. Uh, but yeah, there are definitely countries that have never come close to winning Cause, an Olympic. Because I, I know that Tonga won its first medal in boxing. Tonga, there's no other medal that they can win. <laughs> this, this, is, this is, I'm just Googling this. So I don't, you know. But this said, uh, despite competing in eight games, Albania has never won a medal. So it, there might be countries that haven't competed, and then that doesn't matter. But yeah, Albania, that's because they're all white people. That's Al oh, Albanios? That's Al oh, yeah, I got Al it. Yeah, Albania. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they're the ones who gave Costa pink eye. <laughs> Uh, Jim, you wanted to talk about the Paralympics, I think. Okay, so I, I was in the UK when the Paralympics happened. Now, so there's the Paralympics and the Special Olympics, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Paralympics are for people who have an amputee or a physical, uh, for lack of a better word, deformity. I don't know if we... Disabil they're disab they're physical disability. And the Special Olympics are for people who have something more um, special. Uh, something in the head more is that is that a good way of saying it? And can I probably not? If, if I, if, <laughs> if, I think you're okay with the Paralympics, but you're not like bad saying that the Special Olympics. But I think it's people that are you know mentally challenged, Men, you know, challenged yeah. people. Is is that correct? And 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 can follow up question: If I'm in a car accident and I have a bit of brain damage, can I compete then afterwards, or do I have to be born with it? So you're basically right on the Paralympics and the uh, Special Olympics, except there are categories for people with mental challenges, uh, particularly from injuries in the Paralympics. Right. Uh, and the answer is yes. If you get in a car wreck and uh, have uh, physical or, or, or neurological or brain damage, you could potentially be a Paralympian. Uh, there's a, a, a panel of, of specialists who would rate your a challenge and put you in the appropriate category. Now, has there ever been sex flies infiltrate the Special Olympics? <laughs> that, that's, beyond, that's beyond my uh, 
uh, <laughs> here, knowledge. You, here you go, Jim. They, this is on their website, special. I'm going to say people with intellectual disabilities. Anyway, that's, that's what I was looking for. I was the intellectually it. disabilities. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, okay, so the famous Oscar Pistorius was the only person who ever cross over from the, and I know this because I did a very lengthy comedy routine on this, <laughs> uh, from the from the Paralympics over to the He's special. the only person? He's the only person oh, to, ever, yeah. to ever compete in in both Olympics, to my knowledge. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, to my knowledge, you're right. And and he could also do now, I hear he can do that skiing one where you shoot a bit. Uh, okay. Cause, yeah. What's that one called? The, I forget what that's ski, called. Ski, 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 shoot, 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 shoot. Bi- biathlon. <laughs> <laughs> ski, ski, shoot, shoot. Biathlon. And that's the one Norway wins, right? Doesn't Norway, that's how they have the most medals is cross-country skiing. Norway and, and Russia. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, why, why, why did that sport really start? I never always watch that. And I'm like, like I don't That's how you ski in Russia. I don't know how cr- <laughs> <laughs> you have to shoot your way, you have to shoot your yeah. way through but the forest. <laughs> I, I really like curling. I don't care how that started because I just like it. But the skiing shooting one, I'm always like, what is going on here? Norm McDonald has a routine about that. He goes, it's like if I ran a bit, then I fished a bit. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, biathlon's a big doping sport because they used... Uh, uh, beta blockers to calm them down to shoot. So that's a big scandal in biathlon. Now, with the luge and the um, uh, bobsled, if I was just, if someone just pushed me down on the luge, could I do all right? Mm, you'd probably die. I, I, is there steering involved? Or you just sit yeah. there and then at the end you're like, hey, gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just the fattest person. I don't, wins. Yeah, I don't I think, think they enter the Olympics to go down I think, water I think the whole sport is done. That bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's also how you make cheese. Get it, get it with a stick. Anyway, so you go like that, and that's all. If anyone, if you can do that the fastest, it's. it's You're talking about I, the I running would, and the. Oh, I was on the luge. The, the, yeah, the, the okay. luge. You're already seated, and you go dum 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 with your hands. I think the luge is the closest sport to all the original Sega Mega Drive Olympic sports where you just tapped really hard. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, so that's the crossover, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know when you tap, tap, tap? I used to like the mm-hmm. California games where you surfed a bit and then you skateboarded a bit yeah. and then you oh, roller skate. Santa Cruz. Yeah. That was Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. Yeah. That but was I don't, think, I don't think that there's more to the... They steer in the luge, right? Do they, don't, they don't steer in the luge, yeah. do they, mate? Oh, yeah. they do. All right. But <laughs> is, is, that just, is, is, no. is that just a matter of moving your head from side to side? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. I don't know. I'm not a luge expert. Uh, yeah. well. All right. Um, we have another episode. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, yeah, there's strategy in there. There's weight distribution depending on which types of curves you're going around and all. There's a choreography to it, I'd assume. I'd like to, 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 to the five people that we have here, five people we have here, everyone give out the sport they think they could compete the best at in the Olympics. Okay. Volleyball. Probably, uh, well, probably she played, well, I, I was Kelly a college volleyball, volleyball player. <laughs> so. uh, all right. Uh, I like how you laughed at her. I was also a swimmer. I almost swam in college too, so I almost, maybe I'd go both. I almost swam the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just I was reading all the sports right now and I read handball as hand jobs and I was like, wow. Well, right, I, I could do, do that. that. <laughs> so, uh, what, um do you, do you want a list of them? No, what sport what, what sport you think you'd compete the best in? Um I, pff, like against other Olympians, just where you're pretty good at basketball. Just where you could hold yourself a little bit. Oh. Is horse an Olympic sport? Because yeah. Forrest um, would crush that. Yeah, I would say rowing. I used to row in college. I think mm. I could, if I trained enough, I could get into rowing because I, I did row crew in college. So I think I could do the, the speed walking. <laughs> That's not. Is that an Olympic yeah. sport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you do that one, like yeah. you kill off Kath and Kim. Yeah. I think they yeah. got rid of that. I, one, I could do that one. I'd go along like that. You'd I practice would. at the mall. I'd go along. I'd <laughs> walk around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. speed walking in the Olympics. Yeah, Mark? it is. Yeah, uh, they do long distances too, like fifty kilometers. No, I couldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> but the speed walking is is people. Uh, they might have sticks. I'm not sure. But like you ha- can have no air. You- both your feet can't be off the ground and you're allowed three times they can go, no, no, no. And it's like on different parts of the course, it's just people looking at you <laughs> and then they'll run out of the crowd and go, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll skirt back in and then the person will be walking like, ah, fuck. And they'll keep walking. But have you ever competed in a- any sport, an Olympic sports, Mark? Or do you- which one do you think you could compete in? Do you? They're, these people, folks are elite athletes, so but I, if you had I, to do one, I know I can't compete with them. When, when did you get passionate about the Olympics? What 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 was the kernel in your childhood where you went, oh, I want to write about this? Uh, my dad was the track and field coach, so you know I did a little track and field, and I remember vividly uh, on a little black and white TV watching Mexico City in '68 and seeing 
spectacular performances and racial politics and all kinds of stuff. See, I, I remember being, I used to very much enjoy the Olympics when I lived in Australia. When I moved to America, I don't give as much of a shit because you're winning medals all the time. But in Australia, there was this feel of, did you hear he won a gold? And it was like the whole country was buzzing for a couple of days. And now, like, America's like, we won five golds today, two silvers and a whatever. You know what I mean? <coughs> um, yep. So hey, hey, let's go down to the one that you said about the who's won the most medals. How did I go? How did I go, uh, first? Overall, um, so individuals. You said Michael Phelps yep. has won the most. Yep. I, I believe that's correct, right? That's correct. Um, yep. Do I have to pull this list up, Mark, or do you know this off the top of your head, the top five medal winners of all time? You better pull it up. I know yeah. Michael Phelps. <laughs> so. Michael Phelps, by the way, ranks, I think, 38th all time as a nation. If Michael Phelps Jesus. is a one-man nation. That's, right. that's pretty incredible. South, South Africa in the, in the all crap. time since Damn. the South Africa. So, uh, so, so he's the best country per capita. Yeah, he <laughs> definitely is. Yeah, the, him in a... In, uh, who was the other one? Jamaica. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Number one is Michael Phelps. Number two, Larissa Latyanina. What is she? Gymnast? Gymnastics. Yeah, uh, good sounds. guess. Mm -hmm. And then it's number three is Pavo Nurmi. It just says athletics. Yeah. What's athletics? athletics? Okay. Uh, uh, track and field. Uh, uh, British, the real English term for track and field. Yeah, because he was 1920, 1928. Then number four is Mark Spitz. Mark Swimmer. Remember him. Yeah. He's number four. And number five, Carl Lewis. So you had two of the top five. You had Carl, Carl Lewis. Lewis. And number two, you had Flojo is down the list. She's but how did Thorpey do? How did Ian Thorpe do? Ian Thorpey. Thorpe. The Thorpedo. Yeah. No. I don't think he was in enough Olympics, but he crushed one of them. Ian Thorpe. I don't know. I don't see him. Like, the, he, just, I think he did pretty good. Uh, yeah. He's number 45. Ah, bloody Thorpe. Damn. Australia <laughs> sucks, bro. Thorpe. He, nah. he, he was our Ian Th Thorpe's. Um, yeah, he was. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I've lost, Jim just had a stroke. I've lost <laughs> my brain. <laughs> I don't know about anything. <laughs> Mark, there was something interesting. I know. That we, well, I might say that for a little bit later. Actually, there's there's some questions I'm going to ask Jim right now. Okay. Um, I just had a brain. We just had, lost both of our brothers. Seriously, what the fuck is wrong with you, Tom? <laughs> this is why Joe Rogan got a hundred million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I have some questions that I usually ask Jim at the end, and uh, I'm going to throw those out there. A lot of them we actually answered during this, so I might re-ask them and see how much you know. Sure. But um, let's see. The first. Uh, ask me. Ask me which Olympics Torval and Dean were in. I know that. Who? Torval and Dean. Torval and Dean won the gold medal for figure skating and they were British and the British never win anything in the Winter Olympics. Well, and so, so to, uh, it was in, I'm going to say Sarajevo. Is that correct? Yeah, but it was ice dancing. Ice dancing, yeah, figure yeah. skating. Well, What's the difference between ice dancing and ice skating? This is without all I the can't jumps. tell the difference, but they get really mad at you if you don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they get a little catty. <laughs> you know, one of those guys in Lycra going, excuse me. <laughs> one has ribbons, uh, the other one doesn't. <laughs> okay, so here you go. D um, gold medals are made of mostly silver. Right. So this is kind of like... I'll but there's say. some real gold in it. Yeah, it says yeah. it says that. Um, it, I guess it depends from Olympics to Olympics. Is that, it says in the 2018 Winter Olympics in South Korea... They were the heaviest medals ever at that point with gold medal weighing in at 586 grams with the gold selling for around 1350 an ounce. Oh, if it was pure gold, it'd be $28,000, but it's not. It's guess, I guess it's not. In, Swi in Switzerland, they were made of chocolate. Um, okay, so only three modern. Uh, Jack just gave me a. Hmm. That was his response. I like chocolate. Here's, let's see if you can remember this. Only three modern Olympic Games have been canceled. Do you remember? Now, can you tell us where those were? Oh, okay. They were um, uh, Berlin. Uh, during the First World War, had uh, the Olympics cancelled. And then I forgot the other two. I think World War One was 1916, was Berlin. Yeah. World War II was 1940, 1944. And I believe one of them, Mark said. Tokyo it. was one. Tokyo's yeah. had it cancelled. Yeah. Tokyo, that's two. And, and then. Um, 1940. Yeah. Yeah, and then the other one, they just didn't have it because the war was going on, I guess. So. And that was nobody. Um, only five countries have been represented every modern era Summer Olympic Games. Only five in the modern era have been represented at Summer Olympic Games. Can you name. At least three out of the five. Oh, so countries that have done both? No, no, no. In, in the modern era, only five countries have appeared in all every Summer Olympic Games that have ever existed since 18... I forget what the year Oh, was. I thought you were saying what countries have had both Olympics. That's no, an no. interesting question. No, no, no. It's what country... What these, these five countries have been in every Summer Olympics in the modern era. Okay, so I'm going to say America. Wrong. Okay, Ooh. I'm going to say Britain. Correct. Uh, I would say Italy. No. Uh. I'll say Spaniola. No, you're not doing well. Uh, I'll say uh, Norway. Still wrong. 
Uh, summer, uh, summer Olympics. Summer, yeah, it, it would be okay. both. Uh, Tonga. No, let, let me just give them to you. Australia is one of them. It's out of Australia getting all of them. I thought we weren't old enough. Oh, we are old enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Great Britain. This is what I have listed too. We have Great Britain, Australia, France, Switzerland, and Greece. Now, I believe in the first Olympics, there was an Australian. I've heard this. There was just one bloke. Is that correct? One guy. One guy, and he was throwing goannas or something. But no, there was there was there was one bloke. There was one bloke from Australia in the first Olympics who was just you know backpacking around. <laughs> and I uh, thought I'd give it a go. You know, I competed in like fucking ten things. I did. It was aces. Now, do you the- know about anything about that, Mark? The- yeah. So there's no national teams until the 1908 Olympics in London. So it's just whoever showed up. And basically, the first games in Athens were in the spring in April and. Uh, people uh, on holiday, uh, uh, Australian guy named Edwin Flack um, did very well in track and field in, in, Flack. in, in uh, Athens fuck. in 1896. I fucking ran faster than these Greek cunts, I tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any other cool facts about Australia and Olympics that you might have? I, I have a cool one. Not I you, a, Mark. Oh, I've, I've got, I've got, <laughs> okay. I've got, tell me if I'm wrong, Mark. Okay, so the infamous where they had the, they put their hands up, the two black athletes put their hands up. Mm-hmm. The guy who came third was Australian, and it sort of, because of Australian politics, it sort of ruined his career afterwards. He 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 was in solidarity with him. He said he'd hold his head down and all that type of stuff, but he'd still go up and oh, collect so his medal. Oh, so he held his head down. He he was with him. Yeah, he okay. he he knew they were going to do it. Then he did it, and it kind of he kind of got blacklisted after that. Am I correct in saying that? You're correct, except he's from New Zealand, Peter Snell, uh, and he wore a, a Olympic <laughs> project for human rights button, and yeah, he t- he took a lot of flack for it because he didn't put his hand up. I don't know. He did I, put his hand oh, up. Oh, he did put it. Okay. I thought he was. No, I thought he didn't put his hand up. I was just, the photo only has no, the two. He, he, uh, he was in solidarity with them. He, he got one of their pens, the Olympic Project for Human Rights, and um, uh, he expressed solidarity with them. And so so he's from New Zealand. He got flack for being sympathetic to them. He's from wow. New Zealand. I never knew. That. I feel terrible. Sorry, New Zealand. <laughs> but next they're going to start claiming their own crowded house in Russell Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, see, I will put this on there, but there's a picture. See, what he's got his, his, his hand All up. Right, yeah. Another one in the 70s. Oh, Wait. that's German. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, that, was, that was a highlight. <laughs> 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 they were pretty upset about that. Oh, <laughs> For people who didn't see, Forrest just, Forrest just showed me a picture of someone giving a Nazi salute at the Olympics. <laughs> that's just the A lot of controversy yeah. around that one. He's like very supportive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll have to find the right picture. Tommy Smith and John Carlos in Mexico City, they only had one pair of gloves. So they one took the right hand, one took the left hand. So he wanted to raise his hand. Snell wanted to raise his hand too, but there was no glove for him. So he sort of gave a, you know, half-hearted uh, uh, um, uh, salute. But uh, but he was very much in solidarity with their protest. So, 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 so the third guy was in New Zealand. Now... Was that in sports, was that because we have the kneeling for the anthem, was that the first protest in the Olympics? I, th- I find this very interesting. So my argument would be the first protest, the first real political protest in the Olympics was 1908 in London when the U.S. team, it's the first parade of nations, and the U.S. Uh, goes against uh, international protocol and refuses to dip its flag to the English king uh, in London. But the reason for it was really more Irish solidarity. The guy that carried it was uh, of Irish descent, a weight thrower named uh, Ralph Rose. And it was in protest with the Irish athletes who were forced to compete under the Union Jack because Ireland was then not independent from Great Britain. But they won the potato throwing. Lineage to protest. <laughs> okay. Oh, so here's, there you go. Here's, here's another question for you, Jim. A couple questions, then we're going to get to our dinner party fact, with Mark. Uh, the first Olympic drug suspension did not occur till what year? Uh, 1972. Close. 1968, this says. Um, this says Hans Gunnar Lidgenwall. He was a pentathlete. Pentathlete. Um, and is this true? He was tested positive for alcohol and he was suspended? Is that correct, Mark? Yeah, it was on the list of banned substances. So they Jesus. used to take it to calm their nerves. Do you agree with banning substances or do you think we should all just have a go? You know, it's hard to know. I go back and forth. Uh, you know, in some ways, it would be nice if everyone played by the same rules. One way to do that is open it up and tell people they can take whatever they want and do whatever they want. Uh, and finding that line between, you know, what's legit performance enhancing and what crosses the line is problematic. On the other hand, 
you know, there's a lot of dark history of, of people being forced to take substances in Soviet Union in East Germany without their consent. As we do in this part of the show, Mark, uh, we have something called Dinner Party Facts, where um, you uh, give us a fact that's obscure, interesting, that our listeners can take to uh, at a dinner party or a bar or something like that to show that they have some sort of knowledge of the Olympics that other people might not know. Um, I know actually that you mentioned the the flag dipping thing was one thing, that, but um, do you have anything else? I know there was something else we talked about that was interesting, I think. That, uh, I'm Remind gonna, me what that was. The, the, the palm trees, I'm sorry. Oh edit. yeah, okay, yeah. so. Wait, maybe we should edit uh, this out. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me start over again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's a you, you like on Comics Unleashed. So what do you think about palm trees? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about palm trees. Uh, <laughs> um, here's a part of the show, Mark, uh, called Dinner Party Facts, where uh, we give the listeners, or you give the listeners, um, one fact that can be obscure, interesting, something that they can use at a dinner party or a bar to show that they have some knowledge of Olympics that other people might not know about. So if you have something that our listeners can take home. So especially there locally in Southern California, you know, the palm tree is an iconic symbol of Los Angeles, but they're not native to the area. They really date to sprucing up LA for the 1932 Olympics. The, the power behind the 32 Olympics was a real estate developer named William, William A. Garland, who got the uh, city to plant literally tens of thousands of palm trees to make it look good for visitors from around the world. And they kind of, the Wilshire Boulevard area lined with palm trees, that was his big real estate development. Mind. Or they spruce it up again. Mind fucking blown. Yeah. Mind blown. I thought that the palm trees were indigenous and in and out burgers grew out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, because those are all, I think, I believe most, a lot of them are Washingtonians. So a lot of those really, really, really tall ones you see, so I guess, could be almost like 80 years old or whatever. That's Whoa. been there. Since the 1936 yeah. Olympics. But yeah. before that, we had no palm trees. What did we? What? what, what well, this what, is a, this is not a palm tree. This is like a chaparral was, or. What a, was a, going on? It was nothing. Yeah. In the old house, I had one in the backyard. Was that for the Olympics? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where they lived there. That's where the hockey team lived. There you <laughs> So the Summer Olympics, bad one. All right, basketball, whatever. No, field hockey. Uh, field hockey, that's what I meant. Australia, Australia always does so, well in the field hockey. So they plan them again in 84? That's when the next one's Yeah, up. they spruce them up in 84. So I imagine. Like, look, they'll probably do it for 2028. New palm trees. New, new palm, palm trees. trees. Hell yeah. All right. Um, all right. That, uh, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Mark. Dyer, Mark. What the fuck? Yeah. I've been calling him Mark the whole episode. <laughs> Edit that up. <laughs> No, he's uh, Mark, right? I, yeah, I, I know, Mark. but I just oh, said right. Mark. Oh, yeah. I thought of Mark the whole oh, time. Oh, fuck me. I, I was scared Mike. then. <laughs> well, I was like, <laughs> we have to start again. <laughs> uh, Mark Dyerson, thank you very much for being on the show. And like I said, if you are interested in learning more about the Olympics, you can... Um, uh, buy one of Mark's books. Are they available on Amazon? I'm not sure, but they're, they're oh, called. Oh, yeah. Okay. Amazon and all your other fine booksellers. And you want to tell us the names again? I have them here in front of me, but you, you can say them. Uh, making the American Team uh, is one. Uh, crafting Patriotism for Global Domination, America at the Olympics. Great. Right. Um, that was awesome. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, I loved it. Thank you very you, much. Thank you. You can stick around for this. This is the last part of the show. A little quick thing we if do. If you want, you can go. You, if can, you, yeah. you can stick you don't, around. You don't, you don't offend us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, You're in quarantine. What are you? What are you come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's called I Do Know About This. All or right. maybe I might know about this. And this is a topic that Jim thinks he might know something about. And Actually, so can, Mark, if you want to stick around, you can join in. If you think you know, after I do me a bit, if you think you know more about this topic, give it a go. Okay, give so it a go. We asked Jim three quick questions. Okay. Three quick questions about a topic each week and see if he does, in fact, know about Jack, this. you want to join in? Yeah. All right. This week's subject, Blackjack. Blackjack. I know. Oh, no, no, no. That's here's the questions. You don't have to tell me. I know you, you, you like Blackjack. You enjoy playing Blackjack. Uh, I do, yes. Yeah, okay. So let's see if you know anything about Blackjack. Uh -huh. Um, how far back does Blackjack date? Like, at least how far back is the first mention of Blackjack? That would say? 2,000 years. Um, the first written mention of Blackjack was in a collection of short stories by Miguel de Cervantes, the author of Don Quixote, over 400 years ago. Whoa. <coughs> yeah, so there's a passage in there when they refer to a, um, a game called, uh, Ventiuna, which is like, uh, Ventiuna, it's 21. Ventiuno. Oh yeah. It's Ventiuna. like, a, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. 21. The way you wrote it. That, <laughs> I didn't uh, write 21, it. Which I is copied Spanish for 21. It. Venti, Venti, Ventiuno. So I know the deck of cards has a lot to do with the, the calendar, right? And the sea. So there's, there's, there's four Ventiuno. suits matching for four seasons, seasons. Mm. 52 cards, 52 weeks, 12 cards in every deck, uh, 12 months of the year. It's all got to do with calendar. Well, it's and 13 cards in each suit. Shut up, Jack. 
<laughs> Jack, you can go home now. <laughs> okay. Is You're it, no is longer needed here. 13, yeah, but yeah. no one counts the ace. All right, second question. <laughs> Do I say 12? <laughs> fucking hell, I should fuck what, are the chances of, <laughs> what are the chances of getting a natural blackjack or 21? A natural one. Not or a, what, percentage? Yeah, yeah percentage. Of or a, a one in... Just percentage. Percentage. Yeah. I want to think like when I when I play blackjack, I think it's one in twenty hands. So I'm going to say it's five percent chance. Wow, wow. Do you have an answer, Mark? You want to get in, or do you know anything about blackjack? Yeah. How about four percent? Oh, Jim wins this one. It's four point eight percent. Wow. So, except yeah. you overbid. If it was the Price Is Right, yeah. Mark would win. So I don't know. We'll get it. Four point eight is really different. close to five. You guys both split the pot. Yeah, but uh, I I didn't know that. But it feels like one in twenty. Yeah, yeah. that was good. That was good. All right, and here's one last question. There is a Blackjack Hall of Fame at the Barona Casino in San Diego. Mm -hmm. The casino offers inductees free rooms, food and drinks for life in exchange for what? Um, if you gamble over a million dollars on Blackjack. You want to venture a guess? They give them free rooms, uh, drinks, food, and uh, for life. It's the, the Blackjack Hall of Fame in San Diego in exchange for what from these players? Uh, you got me. Jack, you got anything? Maybe they lose ten thousand dollars in the casino. No, for agreeing to never play at the casinos tables. Uh, oh, that's a good deal, though. They yeah. go there and drink and hang out. And if you're really good, mm -hmm. I, I count cards a little bit at the beginning, and then <laughs> when I get drunk, yeah, you counted three, twelve instead four. of thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 one time we took a load of mushrooms, and I went out and played blackjack. <laughs> uh, now Forrest doesn't gamble, right? Was so that last time we were in Vegas? <laughs> there was the time before, and I'd gone out, and I'd been winning every time. Like I was up thousands. Yeah, I, so I, I remember I wasn't out there. I stayed in the room. You stayed in the room, and I was really high on mushrooms. And I walked. You went out with a group of people, all friends. And they yeah, all back. friends. I walked out, and then I was like, I was in the. I was playing hundred dollars a hand, and I took like a thousand bucks to me and it went really quick like i lost like eight hands in a row and then i because i was on mushrooms i thought like what's the chances <laughs> <laughs> like i came back and i went to forest you wouldn't believe and everyone else is on mushrooms seriously <laughs> it's he rigged lost against like us. eight cheating. in a row it's like the casino knew what was gonna happen <laughs> And I was like, or you're in a casino yeah. Yeah. and you lose money in a casino. Yeah. That's the other option. And I, uh, I, was, I was hitting on cards. I was like, give me number 12. <laughs> All right. Well, that's our show for today. Jim, take us out. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the show. I really appreciate you listening. If you have been listening and you enjoy it, give us a nice review. Tell your friends uh, and keep listening to the show. If you don't enjoy it, go listen to something you enjoy. Yeah. Get yeah. out of here. And don't review us. And don't, don't, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Leave yeah. us alone. And it, don't I be mean, negative. At this point, you already know where to find it, but just in case, we're on YouTube, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere else you listen to podcasts. And please go to our Instagram page, IDKAT Podcast. And, and follow you, us there. And if you're ever at a party and someone smarter than you says something and you don't want to lose the fight, you just go, well, I don't know about that. And you walk away. Thanks, everyone. Good night, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, sorry, the podcast was meant to end, but little bonus uh, feature here. Mark, our expert, he has since emailed us since the show was over. What did he have to say for us there, Forrest? Okay, this was in relation to um, who was in support uh, in in the uh, it was with Tommy Smith and okay. Anyways, he thought he said in he, Mexico when there was a protest yeah, yeah, yeah. where the two black read, athletes I'll punched I'll the sky. Read his email. There was a guy who came third. And I was told that I was wrong, and the man was from New Zealand. Yeah, I'm gonna read. Ha -ha! I'm, gonna read I'm gonna read Mark's email. He was from Australia. Mark wrote us an email literally a couple minutes after he got off the air. Uh, uh, tell Jim he was right, and I was wrong on the 1968 Mexico City protest. I brain glitched and mixed up Peter Snell, a New Zealand distance runner, and Peter Norman, an Australian who finished second in the 200 meters, and sympathized with Tommy Smith and John Carlos. I, I don't know if Peter Norman's still alive, but if he's listening to this after like being shunned after the Olympics <laughs> yeah. and get, being in trouble for getting a bronze, and then he's listening to this podcast, oh, I'll get a, I'll get a bit of credit. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, yeah. It was actually in New Zealand. Oh, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst so, thing that can happen. So thank you for writing to us, Mark. Uh, and that's why he's, he's still an expert. He's still an expert. Yeah, still and now you can be an Olympics expert yeah. on somebody yeah. else's podcast. I'm an expert on any topic that we've done now. Now, I am now an expert on all these things. I think university courses should be an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone.